One sentence summary, a bunch of new mutants are trapped in a hospital that is exactly as sinister as it seems. Could you beat the villain? So, Danny Moonstar, it's her own powers are working against her and her friends. I guess they're her friends. And yeah, I could, um, I could beat that situation if it were happening to me. And more on that in the How to Improve This Film session. How to Improve This Film. So the film opens and ends with the retelling of the legend of two bears, which is like the one I'm sure everyone's heard, because I'm sure it's the real one, of two wolves. So like you've got a good wolf and a bad wolf inside you. Which one's stronger? It's the one you feed the most. So, good, all right. We see the demon bear, you know, it, it killed everyone in Danny's hometown, the reservation. That's sad. Then at the end, it comes back and it's like, chomp, chomp, chomp. I'm going to eat everyone. The bear doesn't talk. How the fuck did you manage to get this wrong film, all right? The legend is of two bears. We see the bad bear, oh, scary. And then Danny basically just tells it to sit, bad, bad bear, and it just behaves. What should have happened, and would have been way cooler, would have been, she's like, oh no, the big scary demon bear, but I've got another bear inside me, and she like morphs into a big giant white bear or something, and they CGI bear fight or something like that. That would have been way better and actually makes sense when you say at the start of the film there are two bears and at the end of the film there are two bears. Why is there only one bear in the film then? Think about that. <coughs> right, none of the characters have their powers properly established in this film, which I guess is fine particularly if they're kind of learning what they can and can't do. But uh, Ileana, I think her name is, Rasputin. Magic. That's her name and they say it in the film sort of. Anyway. She can teleport, and it's never explained why she can't just teleport away from the facility if she can't, if she doesn't want to be there. Away she goes, but it's never explained why she doesn't do that. Bobby, aka Sunspot, he um, his powers are he absorbs solar radiation, and then he kind of bursts into flames, a bit like uh, Johnny Storm, and he can shoot fire, and he's super strong. We see him in the film, blast a creepy Marilyn Manson looking dude with an energy blast and then at the end of the film when he's fighting the big demon bear he just throws some pews at it shoot far at it that's what you're good at <coughs> cannonball one of the characters i didn't really learn anyone's name i think his actual name is sam but i remember that from the anyways his hat is on his head in one scene then it vanishes then it's back like fair enough you know that happens then that same thing happens again later in the film it's like come on dude and uh Maisie Williams plays Rain. Not spelt the way you'd think it was, though. Uh, and I'm sure her hair changes part of the way through the film. Like, did she always have those highlights, or did I miss that? Anyway. Everything is layered on in this film very, very thick, so, like, everyone gets it, and it's not subtle at all. Example number one, Rain, played by uh, Maisie Williams. Her character is a lesbian. So how do we know that? She saves Danny from jumping off a roof, sad times or a clock tower, and then they're laying on the floor together, having like, almost slipped, and there's a moment where they kind of lock, lock eyes. That's classic in films, for these characters are going to get it on later. Um, then, later in the film, we see that she is watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, which appears to be like the only DVDs they've got on the shelf, weird, but that she's watching a bit about a lesbian. Okay, fine, we get it, she's a lesbian. And there's also the bit where she's... A religious character and she wanted reverend whatever his name is to pray away her demons all right we get it she's a lesbian fine okay stop layering it on you could have just done one of those and it would have been fairly obvious example number two of that same thing cannonball accidentally killed his dad so we know this because he's beating himself up and he can't control his powers side note if you're going to punch yourself in the face because you bloody you're a failure or whatever <laughs> Why would you do it in the hand that's got a cast on it when you've got a perfectly good hand right here? Anyways, he's beating himself up, can't control his powers. Then we're told in an exposition scene, more on that in a bit, that he was really good in school, but he had to drop out and go work in the mines with his dad. We've got no evidence he was good in school. Also, earlier in the film, it's like the characters aren't talking, aren't sharing, but apparently Maisie Williams knows everything about everyone. Anyways... And then we see like a flashback to the uh, incident where Cannibal accidentally kills his dad and he's got this lump of coal that his dad gave him just before he died as well that he's afraid of the dark and he looks at and stuff. If you work in a coal mine, you're probably given a lot of coal. The point is, they layer that on very, very thick. 
that, oh, he, he accidentally killed his dad before they reveal, oh, he accidentally killed his dad. So I fucking know. I, you've already told me three ways. Very Example number three of that same thing. Dr. Reyes works for Mr. Sinister, uh, a comic book villain, otherwise known as Nathaniel Essex. Um, or Nathan Essex. Probably Nathaniel. Doesn't matter. But at the end, it's kind of treated as a surprise that their facilities are, you know, not in their best interest. But the entire film, Dr. Reyes wears a badge with Mr. Sinister's logo on it. Okay, fair enough. And then in an email, Essex Corp is name dropped. Okay, I get it. And then the characters are like, one of the characters actually, not even all of them, picks up their file that was just lying around. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to train these kids to become killers. And they're like, oh no, the Essex Corp are evil. Like... You're in a creepy facility with one member of staff and cameras everywhere. Yeah, it's evil. Like, you're not going to be... No, it doesn't matter. The point is, sometimes less is more. And this film needed to learn that. <coughs> so the exposition scene I've just mentioned. Rain walks uh, through the cafeteria with Danny and tells everyone... Tells you, like, this is what Sam does. This is what Bobby does. This is what Ileana does. Good times. She's crazy. He's rich. He's dirt poor and killed his dad. It's like, why was that scene even there? Like, you didn't need it. Bobby, all he seems to do in the facility is wash dishes. Because we see him in that exposition scene, he's washing dishes. We see him later, he's washing dishes. We see him later, he's washing dishes. Why is no one else washing dishes? Is, was it his week to do it? I don't know. Bobby seems to have a phone um, with a picture of his dead girlfriend on. And then later he's like, oh no, give me your phone, Dr. Reyes. I'm going to call for help. If you've got a phone, it, like they've not established that you can't call out. Like There's no Wi-Fi or something like that. There's a bit where Ileana encourages Danny to like run for freedom. And you can tell that she's going to hit a wall or a force field or an invisible wall or something. It's so cliche. Why did you do it? But Danny hits that wall, she's got a bloody nose, and then she hasn't got a bloody nose, and then she has got a bloody nose again. It's like the goddamn hat all over again. How does the force field that Dr. Reyes, a mutant, keeps up? How is that there if she's like asleep or unconscious? And it's not properly um, set up that the force field is covering the doors and the windows. It's said that it is later in the film, but, you know... There's a bit where Maisie Williams goes for an air vent and she can get out of the facility. And there's also a bit where Ileana like, asks to be let out and then the doors unlocked. We don't see like a force field like bubble away. And speaking of that bullshit force field, at the end of the film, Cannibal's looking at his chunk of coal and he throws it. And then he's like, hey, the force field's not up. But we've never seen him throw something that direction or that far and hit the force field before. So as far as we know, he just can't throw as, far, uh, throw as far as the force field. Rain, more on the force field. Rain cannot get through. Rain, the precipitation, not the character, cannot get through the force field. And we see a nice scene where they're looking up and it's all dropping on it and it all looks lovely. How, how is the grass getting watered? Because that grass looks fairly healthy. Weird. And there's a bit where I think Bobby or someone mentions, like, oh, you've heard of the X-Men, haven't you? And I was like, oh yeah, they're well cool. Ileana's brother is Colossus, one of the X-Men. Why does that never get mentioned? When is this film set? So, we see some like high-tech technology, like the security cameras and all that stuff, cool, fair enough. But every TV and monitor we see looks like it's from the 90s. And then again, they're watching like DVDs with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, that's strange. But, you know, could have been set in the past, I accept that. But we also see, and also they mention the X-Men or mutants are heroes. So when is that in the time frame? Because that was like the last Dark Phoenix. They were sort of seen as heroes, but that film sucks. But throughout all of the other ones, they're kind of rubbish. Except for Logan, where they've got the memories and the comic books of like, this is what the X-Men did. And Logan's all like, nah, I wasn't really like that, bro. And also, I'm pretty sure we see clips from the film Logan of like the mysterious facility where X-23, the little girl, comes from. Laura, that's her name. So, 
When was this film set? And also, Bobby had like a modern-ish looking phone as well. So I don't know. Liana isn't properly hooked up to that lie detector in that scene, so she could have been lying. No one would have known. Uh, mistaking a brand, like a, someone's hit you with a iron, a hot iron, for a tattoo, that's, that's stupid. Lockie the dragon is a puppet for most of the film. Um, and then he becomes alive at the end for some reason. But I'm pretty sure there was a scene where we're looking at... Oh, that was a fly. Looking at Ileana from behind. She's got no puppet in her pocket. And then we see her from the front and she has got a puppet in her pocket. That was weird. But her talking to the puppet was very much like uh, Rimmer in Red Dwarf when he goes mad and starts talking to that penguin. <laughs> no idea what was going on in the final fight because there were too many particle effects it was all like snow and demon bear magic it was just confusing and dr reyes says that a twister took out danny's family and their reservation and then later she says we both know it wasn't a twister you were the one who said it was a twister come on mutants have been exposed to the world since the 70s in the timeline unless this is a different one or something and we're not really sure when this film is set anyway but whatever so I don't quite understand why people still think, especially like the religious people, why they still think demons and magic are real. Because if you see you know, someone teleporting or someone turning into a wolf, you're like, yeah, probably a mutant. Because, you know, those have been around for 50 odd years now. <laughs> Dr. Reyes pushed Sunspot into a pool with a, like a pool skimmer. And that set out his fighters when he was freaking out. And it was just like, she she tapped him and he went, whoa. If he was like, oh yeah, the, the water will put me in. I'll fall in the water. Could have just jumped him. But there you go. Uh, Ileana is racist. She has a load of like Native American jabs at Danny Moonstar. And calls her Pocahontas and other stuff like that. That's, that, that's not cool. That was like a, a black character or something. I don't think we would have got that. But Maisie Williams is like that high in real life. And so she's the shortest character in the film. Why is she the one carrying Danny when Danny is unconscious? Like, Cannonball, he's got a broken arm, but, you know, he could do it. And uh, Bobby, he's like, oh, no, I don't want to pick her up because I might burst into flames. She's like five foot, if that. Just give her a hand, Christ. Why was there a close-up of Rain's ears to indicate super hearing when we could already hear what it was that she was focusing on? So that's not super stupid. And there's a bit where um, someone's like, how do you know Reyes is here? And uh, Rain goes, I smell good. Do you mean you have like nice Lynx deodorant on? Other brands are available. Or do you mean you can track her smell? Because those are different things. Rating out of five beers, I would give this a three. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't Dark Phoenix, but I won't be revisiting it anytime soon. And also I get the feeling that all the horror elements in like the original trailers from like three or four years ago, whenever it was, almost completely taken out of the film. So this was more like a drama or like a regular adventure with some scary 